All right, folks. Uh, I got another question today. This one's electric field intensity with uh, different points. This one's uh, one that's uh, it's not too bad, but it seems to cause people trouble when they see it on a test. So I thought we'd make a we'd work one out. So the question is: Determine the electric field intensity at point P. So that's point P. In the diagram below, all measurements are in centimeters. And express your answer in I hat J hat form, so it takes less time. And part B: What is the force on a 10 microcoulomb charge at this point? So Here's my diagram. I'm looking for electric field intensity. So uh, let's write down a few things. We don't always write this down, but we should. So this is, let's call this um, Q1. And this is Q2. So Q1 is equal to 50 microcoulombs. And Q2 is equal to 30 microcoulombs. They're both positive. So usually what I like to do is draw a diagram, put the arrows on it. So I'm going to take uh, vector. And which way will P go because of Q1? Well, that's going to go push it off in that direction. And so it'll repel the P because P is always a positive, as you recall. If you don't, P is always considered to be positive test charge. But we're just looking for how strong the electric field is at this point. So this is going to be, I'm going to call this E1. So that is the field intensity because of the first, the first charge. And I also have, because of Q2 also being positive, it's going to make it go that way and uh, we don't know strength yet it's less it's it's uh, less charge but it's also closer so we don't know so this is e2 so because we're looking for electric field intensity we want to figure out what e1 and e2 is but before we do that we need to figure out some dimensions so i'm going to draw a line go from here to here and so i'm going to make a triangle that shows our dimensions because this one is going off here and I would have drawn a line. Let's back this up here a second. If I draw a line on here, here's the triangle that we'd use to figure this out. It's a right triangle and this would be my angle. I'll call it theta one. But we know we can't work from there because there's no dimension. So I'm going to go back. I need this dimension anyway to find the R for the for the E field intensity, but as I've also boxed this in, so these two triangles are the same, so that's theta 1, and I don't need to know the dimensions, so if I look at, oops, sorry, back to my pointer, here's my dimensions, this spot right here is 40, 30, so from 0 over to 40, this side is 40, this side is 0 up to 30, so using uh, r equals the square root of x squared plus y squared, and you should know where that comes from. That's just Pythagoras. And using that formula, uh, I don't expect you to show all this, so that would be 30 squared plus 40 squared, which 30 squared plus 40 squared, take the square root of that, gives you 50 for that side. We also need to draw this one, and maybe I should make these different colors. Let's make this one a red, maybe. So there's the red triangle. And I also have this one over here. Let's make this one, let's make it green. So I want to close this in. So I have, close that in. We'll make a line go that way and a line go that way. And we will make them green. So this would be, that one's going in that direction. So this is theta 2. Of course, we can't do that. So we need to go back to our, original point we're going to make a triangle and move that 30 so it's sorry move that 30 because that's the one for this triangle and this line goes to there so this is my theta 2 so we need to know the dimension of this triangle this goes from 40 over to 60 so that goes 20 in the x direction and from 10 up to 30 so that's also 20 so we need to find let's call this one r1 and this will be our R2. So using the same format, 20 squared plus 20 squared. And for this, I get a dimension of 28.28. Now remember, they're all centimeters, and we can't work in centimeters in our formulas. So I've got my triangle all set up. E1 goes up uh, right and up, and E2 goes left and up. So I need to figure out what E1 is. So E1 is 
because I want field intensity and I've got the distance and I've got the chart, I'm going to use E equals KQ over R squared. K is 9 times 10 to the power of 9. Q is, in this case, 50 times 10 to the negative 6. And we divide that by R, which in this case was 0 0.5, all squared. And I get a value for E1 of 1.8 times 10 to the power of 6 newtons per coulomb. And I've run a space, so I'm going to flip to the next page. So my E2, same formula, KQ over R squared. K is a constant. 9 times 10 to the power of 9. Q is 30. Remember to put the 10 to the negative 6 because it has to be in coulombs, but it's given in microcoulombs. And the distance, and I'm just going to keep the numbers the same because I just divided by 100 to change it. So I'm not going to round those off. If you round them off, it's okay. I'm going to leave them though. So E2 works out to be rounded up 3.38 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb. So just skip back. E1 I have, E2 I have. So I know what the field strength is at this point because of E1 and because of E2, but they're going at angles. So you remember if they go at angles, Let's see if I can copy this right here. Nope, not what I want. I'm just going to grab all of this stuff right here. And copy that to the next page. There's that whole diagram. So this whole thing, and if I've got this, I need to put it in vectors. So um, I need to have, if you remember your vector table, I'm going to make a vector table that has E1 at theta1 and E2 at theta2. And then I make my table, I break it into its X and its Y. So again, I'm out of space. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to take my picture again to the next page. Control C, put that on the next one. Press it up a little bit. So E1 at theta1 is equal to, uh, what did we see? E1 was 1.8 times 10 to the 6 at theta1, which we'll fill in here in a minute. And this is uh, E2 at theta2 is 3.38 times 10 to the power of 6. At theta 2, of course, we don't worry about what they are. So I'm going to make myself a little table. Where I find the x and y values. So x, I'm taking to put an x first because I'm doing this in i hat, j hat. So this is going to be 1.8 times 10 to the 6. And then I'm using the x component of this, which we said was 40 over 50. Do the same thing in this one. 1.8 times 10 to the 6. And then it's the y component, which is 30 over 50. And they come from these two values here. There's the 40, there's the 50, and the hypotenuse, or sorry, the 30 and the 40, and there's the hypotenuse of 50. Remember, these are always the same. So the 50 is the 50. These two go together. They're a pair. And then down here I have 3.38 times 10 to the 6. And then if I look in there, I have 20 over 28.28. And again, the same thing. 3.38 times 10 to the 6 times, and I'm running out of space. I'm going to do it here. 20 over 28.28. And they're the same because it's a the two sides are the same. It's not drawn perfectly to scale, but you get the point. I'm going to look at this. This is going, uh, I have to look at the direction. So the x direction is positive and the y direction are positive. In this one, the x direction is negative. So that's why I'm putting the negative in here. 
and then I have a positive in this one. So then I'd have to crunch the numbers. So if I do those numbers, I get 1.44 times 10 to the 6. For this one, I get 1.08 times 10 to the 6. Down here, I get negative 2.39 times 10 to the 6. And this one, I get positive 2.39, which I should because the numbers are all the same. 10 to the 6. So my y is positive in both. My x is negative in this one. I'm going to slap a line on the bottom of this here. My result, the result of this here is negative 0 0.95 times 10 to the 6. And this one is 3.47 times 10 to the 6. So my electric field intensity, my field vector, is... Uh, negative 0 0.95 if we're keeping them all the same scientific notation which is fine uh, newtons per coulomb i hat plus 3.47 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb j hat we could have wrote written this as instead negative 9.5 times 10 to the 5 Newtons per coulomb. So that is the field intensity worked out for that whole thing. It took us about 10 minutes, but I did explain it and I moved stuff around. Um, that is the field intensity. The second part was, uh, what is the what is the force it feels at that point? So if I take those numbers, if you remember, uh, let's just I'm gonna sorry do this. I'm gonna copy all. I'm gonna copy my answer. The next page. If you're looking for force, well, I have Q. So it says, what is the field intensity? Uh, I can't remember my question. Go back a couple pages here. At a 10 microcoulomb charge, field intensity is equal to F divided by Q or F equals EQ. So if I look for the, if I want to do this, I have the field intensity. I have two parts for it. I know the field intensity in the I direction. So simply F in the I direction is going to be F equals negative 9.5 times 10 to the 5 times the Q, which is 10 times 10 to the negative 6. And that's going to give me Now that's going to give me 9.5 newtons in the I direction. So do the same thing in the J direction. F equals, uh, what we have for an answer, 3.47 times 10 to the 6 times 10 times 10 to the negative 6. I'm going to get an answer of 34.7 newtons. J hat. Oh. The resultant force. Is 9.5. Newtons. I hat. Plus 34.7. Newtons. J hat. You could do the whole thing over again with the table. But you don't really need to. You just multiply the field intensity by the charge. For each of the two directions. And that will give you the answer. Hopefully that helped. It's a little bit long example to listen to, but uh, probably worth it and break some parts down for you and it's some good skill stuff. So any questions, as usual, pop in and see me. Thanks.